we're going to work a statics problem. Okay? And this one's uh, a little bit different. Okay? This one is going to be more than just a two equation, two unknown uh, you know, thing that comes out of this, uh, this particular problem. So hopefully this is interesting for you. So basically the, the idea here is that we have two drums that are sitting in a semicircular uh, cradle. Okay? One of the drums is heavier than the other one. So one of them you see up there weighs uh, 300 newtons. The other one weighs 200 newtons. Because the one is heavier, it causes the two drums to sit asymmetrically in the bottom of the trough. Okay? And so what we need to do is figure out a few things. We want to know uh, what is the force between each of the drums and the bottom of the trough. We also want to know how much force exists or between the uh, surfaces of the drums, because the two drums are going to contact each other. So we need to know how much force is applied right there. And we also want to know what are the two angles, theta 1 and theta 2, that describe where the drums will sit when they reach uh, their resting place. Okay? Does this sound good? Good. All right. So uh, this one's a little bit different. So normally when I ask the question, what would you like to do first, what's your answer normally? Free body diagrams. Good job. You guys are paying attention. Uh, and usually that's a good place to start. And honestly, that could be a place we could start with this one. But there might be one thing we could do that's a little bit better than that even at the very beginning of this problem. And it's to try to establish certain geometry. Okay. So that's the first thing that I want to do with this is take this figure. Okay. I'm going to take it and I'm going to uh, copy it over here and do something a little different with it. First of all, I'm going to blow it up a little bit larger than it was. And then I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff that's going to be distracting. And let me draw a couple of triangles on here that will help us to establish uh, certain variables that we might need. Okay. So first of all, let me draw the center of each of these two drums. So this is the center of this drum, and this is the center of this drum. Okay. So my first question is, how far is it from the center of the drum to the point of contact of each of the drums? 30 centimeters. How do you know that? Okay. Yeah, you know the diameter of the drums, each of the drums is 60 centimeters, so you know that the radius of the drums uh, have to be 30 centimeters. So I'll put that on here. These are 30 centimeters. <clears throat> okay. So we've got that there. Do we also know how far it is from the center of the drums to the point of contact between the two drums? Okay. That's also 30 centimeters. So it would be 30 centimeters here and 30 centimeters there. All right. We're, we're getting somewhere. Next thing I want to say is, uh, do we know how far it is from the center to each of those points? OK. You know that it's 80 centimeters, because this is a, a, you know, it's got a circular profile to it that has a radius of 80 centimeters. You know it's 80 centimeters from the center of that uh, circular little ditch that these are sitting in out to the surface, right? So you know that's 80 centimeters, and you know it's 30 centimeters up to the center, which means what are we left with here? 50. All right, and then up here we also have 50 centimeters. Okay. Let me do one other thing. Let me draw a line right there to the point of contact between the two drums. All right. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is I actually want to establish another variable here. And this variable is basically how far has the center of these two drums shifted a little bit. Right. So to do that, let me kind of establish that this is the direction of gravity, right? 
and then this is the direction of from the center of this thing to where the uh, you know to where the uh, gravity would act so from from the position of gravity to the center of this thing and I'm just going to give that a variable of theta Is that fair enough? Because it's because one of them's heavier, it's going to shift the two over a little bit. All right. Um, here's the next thing I want to do. We actually know something about this triangle right here. Okay. For one, it's a right triangle, right? Because it has a 90 degree angle right here. It's a right triangle, and we know the length of two of the sides, right? One of the sides being not so much a side, but the hypotenuse, okay? So uh, knowing those two pieces of information, let's do another thing here and establish a variable uh, right here. I'm going to call it alpha. Can I find what alpha is? Okay, what is alpha? Okay, alpha is equal to the inverse sine of, okay, 30 centimeters over 50 centimeters. All right, so far so good. We'll, we'll kind of leave that alone for just a second, but this might give us some ways that we can talk about our free body diagrams that we now want to draw. Okay, so moving on to, this is sort of a geometry diagram, so I'll put that up here. This is the geometry diagram. What we want to do is move on to the free body diagrams. And I'm going to start with the drum that's over on the left. Okay, there's the drum on the left. Here's the center of the drum. Uh, what forces do I have that act on the drum on the left? One's easy. One is weight, right? And that's just going to be what? 200 newtons. Okay, what else? Say what? Okay, the other drum is going to be pushing on this drum. And so what I would like to do here maybe is establish a horizontal direction and a vertical direction, X and Y. And this force that comes from the other drum is oriented how relative to those axes? Probably below the positive X axis right there, right? So something like this. So let me call that F contact. Okay. Do I know anything more about F contact? Okay. Do I know that it's 300 newtons? Okay. Do I know anything about its direction? I don't have an actual number yet, but do I have something on my figure that would give me a hint as to that direction? Okay. Let me ask this question. What if the two drums were the same weight? How would they sit? Evenly. And if they sat evenly, what would theta be? Theta would be zero. And if theta was zero, what direction would you expect, you know, in that condition where they're both the same weight, what, could, what direction would you say F contact would be acting? Yeah, straight horizontally in the negative X direction, right? So that gives us a little bit of a clue. Let's try to take it to another extreme. What if uh, the, the right drum was super, super heavy relative to the left, left drum and it made it to where, you know, theta became very large, like started approaching even 90 degrees maybe? Okay, what would that do to the direction of F contact? 
okay? The left drum would get higher and higher, and F contact would start being more and more underneath the bottom of it, right? So what that tells us is that we should probably go ahead and say that this is the angle theta. Because we sort of have mentally processed two different possibilities. We could do that more formally and actually worked on some specific geometry there, but you can trust me. That's going to be theta. Okay, and it, the, whatever direction you think about that, it's going to make sense that that would be theta. All right, what next? Okay, there's going to be another force from what? The cradle, right? Where, where it touches the cradle, there's another force that comes up from the bottom there where it touches the cradle. Okay. And let me just call that, I'll just call that F sub 1. Do I know anything about the direction of F sub 1? Yeah, so I know I've already established a variable for the direction of, of uh, F1, and it's theta 1. Okay. Are there any other pieces or any other parts of this body diagram I need to work on? Or am I, am I basically done here? Just because I'm asking the question doesn't mean the answer is yes. Okay. It looks pretty close to me. Looks like that, that might actually be a decent free body diagram. Okay. What about the other free body diagram? for drum two. What do you think? Okay, we know it's weight, okay, that kind of used the last one as a model, right? We know that its weight is going to act downward and it's going to be 300 newtons. Okay. What else? All right. So there's a force of contact from the other drum. We've already established that force of contact. This is a good application, actually, of Newton's third law. Newton's third law says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So what, by, by uh, saying that, it means that we can say that we know that if we've already established the magnitude of this force is F contact, I can just copy that over to this free body diagram because that's the same force as it was on the other one. It's just applied to this body as opposed to that body. Okay? And you know, might notice the arrow goes in the opposite direction, right? That's where the equal and opposite idea comes in right there. Yes, sir? Does that mean that theta would have the same value? Right. So if it goes in the same exact line, then that means that we also know that this must be theta. Okay, so that's pretty powerful that we can, we can say that. We know it goes along the same line, uh, and so we know that those two angles have to be the same. What else? Okay, we have the force from the cradle, and it acts kind of upward like this. Let me call that F2. And anything else I know about F2? Okay. Theta 2 is the direction of F2 relative to that vertical direction. All right. We good? So we've actually basically got the problem solved at this point. You might not believe me. We've basically got the problem solved at this point. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you one of the powerful things about MathCAD. All right, I'm going to take this problem and move into MathCAD. Let me do that. Um, I'm going to take a couple of pieces, actually, of this. Uh, first thing I'll do is grab these free body diagrams. And I'll drop those in here. Okay, 
And then I'm going to take that uh, uh, picture that I made of the geometry, and I'll drop that in there as well. All right. Now, let me flip this around. What should we do first? Okay. Yeah, it's nice. I always like to write down my givens first, you know, kind of the parameters of the problem. So let me call the weight of drum number one. Uh, let's call that just W1, and we'll call that 200 newtons. W2 is 300 newtons. Okay. <clears throat> what else do we know? Let me call capital R 80 centimeters. All right. And then let me call uh, the diameter of the drum, I'll call that lowercase d, and it'll be 60 centimeters. Okay. And so let me put another one in here that's lowercase r. What is lowercase r? It'll be 30 centimeters, which we can calculate with lowercase d divided by 2, right? So let me, from that, I'll say that r, lowercase r, is just equal to 30 centimeters. OK. OK, what else? What else could we do sort of right away here at the beginning? I, I wrote down a. a, a brief calculation on the last one that allowed me to find this angle alpha, okay, based on the givens. So why don't I repeat that here? Alpha is what? Arc sine. Okay. Now 30 is just lowercase r. And what is, it said I, I had 30 over uh, 50 there, right? What's 50 if I'm going to do it in terms of my variables I've defined? capital R oops, minus lowercase r. And then I can see if I want uh, what this angle value is actually going to be. OK. So I always like to do this part, even if it takes a couple of minutes. Um, I like to go in and try to make things make sense to me visually. So I'm going to put borders around my results that I have there, my intermediate results, and I'm going to go up here and call these my givens of the problem. So I highlight them with yellow. All right. I haven't really gotten very much farther just yet, have I? What do I need to do next? Okay. What I'm about to do is use a solve block. All right. A solve block, you might remember from last time, is a way that you can solve multiple equations at the same time. And so what I need to do is go in here and define all of the variables that I would like to find. Okay. And go ahead and put them in with initial guesses. Let me do that like right up here. What are some things I'm trying to find? Okay. Contact force. Oops. All right. I don't necessarily need to guess how much that contact force is going to be. So I'll just guess it's going to be one newton. What else? OK. Someone says force one. What about force two? Okay, we need, we need to know that one as well, so I'm going to enter all these initial guesses. What else? Theta 1 and theta 2. We don't know those either. Okay, what should I put in for theta 1, you think? What would be a good initial guess? You could put in 90 degrees. I'll tell you this. 
What I expect to happen here is that neither theta 1 nor theta 2 is going to be super far off of alpha, right? So why don't I just put in here alpha? for theta 1 and theta 2. Oops. Alpha's right there. All right. Now what do you want to do for theta? Because theta is another thing that we're going to need to know. Right? Based on our free body diagrams up there, we're going to need to know theta, or we need to find it. So let me just put that in as 1 degree. Okay. Now remember, these are all uh, these are all things that we are going to be trying to find. These are initial guesses, and you might remember that normally what I would do uh, on my sheets anyway uh, that I create is I try to color them differently so that uh, if I'm reading my sheet later on, I know what I was trying to do with those variables. Okay. What's the next step of a solve block? Try to get everything on here to where we can see it all. Next step of a solve block is what? Right. Given. Given. And make sure you don't turn it into a text region. You want it to stay a math region. Then what? Okay. We probably want to do next is do our equilibrium equations. Now here's the thing. We have two bodies here. So that means we can do x and y equilibrium equations for each body. All right. So we'll start with the body on the left over there, drum one, okay? And we'll start in the x direction for drum one, okay? So let's find our x forces for that one. What do we have? Okay, we have the x component of F1, right? F1, what do I do to get the x component of F1? I take F1 and multiply by? Okay, someone says cosine, cosine of what? All right, well, let's use sine. I agree with that. It's easier to use sine here because we are given that angle theta 1 relative to the y-axis, which means we need the opposite component from where that angle is measured in order to get the horizontal piece. Okay, do you agree with that? Okay, so we put in here theta 1. All right. Is, is it good that I have this positive right now, or should I make it negative? It's good it's positive. Why is that? Okay, it points to the right, which is the direction I've got kind of shown up here as the positive x direction. Okay, now what? Okay, the component of f contact that points in the x. Okay. Um, and it does go in the negative direction because it tends to point to the left, right? And then what? What do I need to multiply by to get the x component? Cosine of theta. Cosine of theta. Why do I use cosine here instead of sine? Yeah, that uh, angle theta is measured relative to the x-axis, right? So because it's measured relative to the x-axis, that means the adjacent component points in the x direction. Okay. Now what? Okay, that's all of the, the force components that I've got. So I use a control equals to get that Boolean equal sign and set it equal to zero. So that's my x uh, equilibrium equation for body uh, or for drum number one. All right, now what? Should we do the y equation for drum number one? All right. So let's take F1, all right? Does it need to be the, the Y component of F1? Is it positive or negative? Points upward, right? So that would be positive. So I'd take F1 times cosine of what? Theta 1. Then what? Plus. Y plus, because it that generally points upward, right? F contact, whoops, 
times what? Okay. Sine of just theta. What else? Okay. Okay, we have to take into account the weight of the drum on this one, right? Because it points entirely in the y direction. So I say minus, okay, I defined F or W1 to be that 200 newtons, so I'll just put in W1. Again, control equals gives you the Boolean equals sign for this, okay? So those are my two uh, equations that I have for uh, the body that's on the left, drum number one. Now what? Okay, let's do something similar for the body that's on the right. We'll start with F2. Okay, uh, F2 points to the left or to the right as far as X, its X component? To the left, so I'm going to say minus F2 times what? Sine of theta 2, and why am I using sine there? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I need the opposite component to where theta 2 is measured in order to get the horizontal component of F2. All right, then what? Plus F contact times, okay, the cosine of just theta. Anything else for that drum? Okay, now I need to do the y direction equation for uh, drum number two. Okay, so starting with F2, does it point up or down generally? Okay, it points up, so I'm going to take it to be positive. I need the uh, component that is adjacent to where that angle is being measured, right? So I need the uh, cosine function of theta. Two, then what? Minus. Good job. Why is it minus? Okay, it generally has a, a y component that points downward. Then what? Multiplied by. Okay, sine of theta. Okay, and then we need to take into account the weight of that drum as well. Now here's the thing. Right now we have four equations. How many variables are we trying to solve for? Okay, those are the things in the blue right there. I've got six items that I'm trying to solve for. Am I good yet? Okay, what do I need to do? There's a couple more pieces of information I can add. Let me ask this. Do I have a relationship that I can establish between theta 1, theta 2, theta, and alpha. Okay, like what? Okay, here's how I would say it, is I would say that uh, theta 1 is going to be equal to alpha plus theta. Do you agree with that? I did use control equals there. This is just another uh, equation that I'm adding uh, onto the system that I'm trying to solve here. Do I have a similar equation that I could write for theta 2? Okay, theta 2 is equal to alpha minus theta. Okay, now how many equations do I have written? Six, and I have six things I'm trying to find. Okay, which means what? I at least have a hope of, of uh, solving it, right? Doesn't mean I can necessarily solve it, but at least I have a chance, okay? So I'm going to go up here and put in what do you think? A matrix 
that has six elements in it, which six things am I trying to find? F1, F2, F contact, theta1, theta2, and of course just theta. I'm going to use the assignment operator here. Type the word find with open a parenthesis so that I use the, assign, the uh, find function here. And then I'm going to put those same variables in in the same order, separated by commas. So F1, comma, F2, comma, F contact, comma, theta1, comma, theta2, comma, theta. Tell you what, you can do some cool things here too. You can say send to the back, which is supposed to work. Let me try that again. There we go. And that way, if it sits on top of other equations that you don't want it to cover up, you can make it not. All right. So now, supposedly, we have answers stored into all of these variables. Let's see what it says. F1 says it's 247.234 newtons. What's F2? Okay, 370.851 newtons. Okay, what's uh, theta one? Uh oh, what's happening here? This is actually very instructive. What do you think is going on? Thoughts? OK, it might be going around a few times. Uh, you know, that might not be a good thing. Um, one of the things that's, that's probably happening here is that this um, is a nonlinear system. OK, how do I know it's nonlinear? Okay. I know it's not linear because I have variables in here that basically I have a variable times another variable, each of which I'm trying to solve for. Right? Anytime you have those two things like that are you know, one variable times another variable, that means it's going to be a nonlinear system. Okay? So that means it really matters up here what I use as my initial guesses. What do you think some things are that I could do that might make this better? What if I use better initial guesses? What if I go up here and say, for F1, let me take the initial guess for F1 to be W1. What about F2? OK, is this better? What if I take theta and say I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that to, to move a little bit more? Okay. And actually, it's, it's good now. All right. I, I kind of fixed it. I, I didn't identify the exact moment that that got fixed. But my point with it is you can see here a point that I made here in class the other day. One of the points that I made was it matters what your initial guesses are if what? if your equations are nonlinear. Okay? You can influence the answers that come out uh, with your initial guesses if your equations are nonlinear. All right? Um, why do you think that is? Okay? Yeah, basically, if you, have, if you think about each of these equations graphically, they are no longer like a set of lines that you're trying to intersect all with one another and find these points where they intersect. Right? Instead, they're like curves. So there can be multiple places where they begin to intersect. And so it's very important for us here to, uh, you know, to come up with good initial guesses. All right? Let me go ahead and put in uh, some of these other uh, values here. Let me put in theta 2. This is going to be degrees. Okay. And then put in 
F contact. And just theta. Any questions at this point? No questions? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so remember, we've so far we've covered three different kinds of equal signs. And his question is, right now he's not getting the right kind of equal sign uh, that he's looking for. Remember, we've got three different kinds of equal signs. Um, the correct keystroke to get an assignment operator, which is what you're getting, that's the colon equals, you type a colon. Here's the thing, though. Uh, if you have not already defined a variable of the name that you put on the left and you type in equals, uh, it will reinterpret what you meant to be a colon equals, all right? But the correct keystroke is colon, all right? Um, by typing equals, if you have a variable that's named that already and it's able to evaluate that instruction of that's an evaluation operator, just a plain equal sign, it will try to evaluate it if you've already got something that's named uh, the name that you put the equal in front of, okay? Um, but we're not using any of those. We want the bold equal sign, and what is that? Okay, the bold equals sign, you type control, hold control down, and type equals. Okay, and uh, that's how you get that. Yes, sir? How slightly? He says his numbers are a little different than mine. How slightly are they off, do you think? Tell you what, I'll take a look at it afterward and see if I can see that if there's any uh, discrepancies in between our two solutions. But there shouldn't be a discrepancy. But we'll uh, we'll see if I can determine what the discrepancy might be. All right. Mine is saying theta is undefined, but I put it in the base case. Okay. Um, there could be any number of errors that were made whenever the uh, equations were entered. And so if you're trying to follow along and it didn't work somehow, I'll try to come around uh, in a few minutes and see if we can figure out what uh, issues may have come up as you were doing that. All right, so there's that problem.